first floor of this room of people. People like wine. People like wine. The best Riesling in Australia is made by this man. I love this guy. Check this out. Tram, bus, and this guy. <laughs> Good. And of course, of course, the only other person we could possibly bump into here. Straight out of the room, Noah. What are we got? Coffee. Coffee. Bee. Coffee. All right, we have, we have offset our day by an extra 15 minutes to ensure that we can get to the really good coffee place. <sighs> coffee time. I'm liking the, the more cash t-shirt get up today, dude. Well, there's no more business events. I'm done with business. Only casual. To be fair, I personally, I know this is me, we've said this before, I'd rather stand out than blend in, in those events, in any event really. Yeah, I want to stand out, but also not ruffle feathers. Yes, yes, you know, ruffling of feathers is not, not always a good thing. Just want to shout out that the best coffee shop that we have found in Hong Kong, or Noah found, is literally right across the road from a Warhammer store. Oh yeah, I noticed There's, that the other day when I was sitting in there. Causation, correlation. Yep. Oh, they're waiting. We're waiting to open. We can line up. Good morning. Good. Can we get some coffee? Oh, awesome. Thank okay. you, Noah. on a mission for breakfast. Yes, but BK's seen some dumplings. I guess it's dumplings then, huh? I think so. So I saw this being made yesterday when we came past uh, to grab coffee, and this is the reason why I abandoned uh, the guys, because this is, just, this is just too yummy. Check this out. Hell yeah. Awesome. How awesome is this? This lady just at once, once she finished, she saw I was filming and she's like, here, have a hot drink. Sick, cool. Oh, boys. What do we got here? So good. Oh, okay. That's still good. This was eight. That kind of leaf thing freaked me out a bit. I just had to eat that sloppy thing. <laughs> the cabbage. Meanwhile, we are on for the next boat. Day number two, Noah. Day number two. Such better weather today, though. Yeah. It is not nowhere close to as humid. I'm wearing a white t-shirt. Oh. <laughs> I wonder what we're going to expect today. We've got a meeting with our Japanese importer, which is fun. Carl. 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 I've got a uh, Masterclass. Uh, masterclass. We're showing us the Ooh, yes. Um, and then we're just pouring wine. The for the, the people. people. And I'm going to try to find some German producers because there's a surprising lack of German producers at Vin Expo. And I think maybe because we didn't get to that part of the hall, I'm hoping. A lot of French, a lot of Italian, but it seems like the buzz is really around the Australia stand, which is kind of like, oh, it's heartwarming. It's kind of nice. Yeah, which is good. It, does, it doesn't happen at any other wine uh, convention around the world. Not really. Like, you know. Hello. Yeah, having a good time. I thought it might be a little bit fun to take you guys on a bit of a walk around the Vin Expo. Come for a walk with me and we will cover the entirety of it. It's gonna be a lot of steps. Uh, we're gonna be getting the calories in, but let's go. He's famous. the vast bulk of our meetings done and let's go find Noah. He's gonna go check out some Chilean wines. Oh hi, nice to see you here. Should we do some fucking Chilean wines? Yeah, absolutely, let's go. Chilean. You know, sometimes you work for some really shit people, but occasionally you work for some really good people. 
So Noah and I have uh, black teeth. Uh, yeah, we, get, we drink a lot of Chianti. Yeah. That was the Gambaro Rosso, so if you don't know what the Gambaro Rosso is, it's like the greatest wines of Italy as adjudicated. It's like a big celebration event every year. And We just found a friendly face. This guy. This guy right here. <laughs> we owe him a bottle of wine, so uh, I might sneak one behind him. And let him, let him get on with a few chats. Hey, we are leaving that there for you, because I owe you a bottle of wine. Oh my God. <laughs> it's great to see you, man. <laughs> How are you doing, Steve? <laughs> I don't want to take you away from the, the conversation, but we'll come back. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'll come by tomorrow. I'll come by tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. I'll serve you a pile. Yeah, we'll come by and have a chat tomorrow. Please, I would love that. Good to see him. Good evening. We found a little cheeky spot to have a quick beer before we, we kind of grab some stuff, go back to the hotel room and go grab dinner. But we were particularly attracted to this place because there were these comically large... Big man? Just or <laughs> small or big beer? That's the big question. Like, comically large beer cups, which are actually cost, costing a bit of a fortune, to be honest. Not too bad. It's actually the same price as the Sydney Rocks. <laughs> worth it. Worth it so I can uh, imagine what it feels like to be like a toddler holding out like just a, a small glass. Yeah, this is what Shelby feels like when he just has a small cup of your water. Yeah, 100%. It's like, this is what Shaq's beer glass would probably look like to me. <laughs> Say hello to YouTube, Gemma. Hello to YouTube. <laughs> cool. Boop, 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 last day of the expo. Listen to them, this that's the dance of my people. <laughs> <laughs> coffee first or food first? Coffee. Coffee first. Life. Coffee first. Coffee first. <laughs> I love the show. Each appointment has been an hour and a half, almost two hours long, to look at two wines. <laughs> <laughs> the first appointment, the dude drank half the bottle. <laughs> came back, went away, came back, went away. It was wild. I think it's safe to say that BK sells wine a little bit differently to the way we do. <laughs> yeah. it's, all about, it's all about value of customers. <laughs> it's about, it's about. <laughs> I thought I'd do a bit of a quick search and I'm just heading up to the Salvation Army to drop off the fast fashion stuff that uh, we bought for those casual business meetings. Turns out from around the corner from the, the really shit hot coffee place, there is a Salvation Army. Let's see if we can donate these bits of poorly made clothing to someone else who's probably gonna have better use for them. Didn't we do this yesterday? There is a spectacle happening. All right, boys. The expo final day. How are we feeling? Ready for it to end? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Three days is good. Like four days would be way too much. We're gonna see if we can go convince Greg Lambrecht to show us how a Corvin works. Not necessarily because we don't know how a Corvin works, but we know what he's carving at this Corvin stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's see if he's still there from yesterday. I believe he could well be. Oh, no, no, he's not there yet. What do we got here? What are they? Oh, there's some burgundy. Yes. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is this happening live. What's going on? How are we doing, guys? Um, you know, just, uh, working from home with Hamish is next to me trying to wheel and deal some wine at the moment. Um, but I actually have a business question for you, so I don't know if you want to film <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. All right, so we've been trying to find Peter Gago. It's been like mission find Peter Gago. This whole thing, obviously, if you guys are watching, you would have seen only yesterday we uploaded that, that interview. And we've just noticed at this whole stand, there's a secret room. There is a secret room at this stand. Peter. <laughs> Just get in there. Is <laughs> <laughs> <He's> anyone's here? <laughs> yeah, good to see you. on. And congratulations on that thing. I just saw it the other night. Oh, did you? No, I'm flying back tonight at eight, and my thing to do was to send a thank you for making oh. me look good. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, no, that's what we do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah.
you walk up and down these different aisles here and yeah you know you sit down you taste through a whole bunch of wines and often you're like kind of stuck there for a fair while and it's the same way the wine australia works but this this is we saw it in uh, pro wine they did it uh in portugal they've really done it really well with spain and now france is doing it here check this out it's basically a come and sort of pour your own stuff you've got the actual information of the producer um you know behind each of these bottles uh and you've got sort of one or two attendants here that just keep all the glassware you know ready to go and you can actually run through uh like these wines here really really quickly picking out the stuff that you actually you know want to have a look at side by side um, really, really, really great, fun way to engage with people that just simply don't have the time or the patience to be able to have on the other eight or nine meetings a day. You can, you know, run through school and producers really quickly. Very, very smart. Also, my favourite word, free. Awesome. Thank you very much. That's exactly what I needed. That's still a bit more fizz and booze. Uh, mm. I, I think you don't like this. That's mm. fine. Uh, what, what is it? Uh, no alcohol. Drinks. Oh, keen to, keen to try. I like that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, please, please, please. Yep. Uh, 100% of beer on no alcohol. Fantastic. No alcohol? No, no alcohol. alcohol. Yep. <laughs> maybe not. No, maybe not. <laughs> this man doesn't stop. He's, he's always connecting always with people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello, friend. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm no see. Yeah, like I hate him. Cheers. Uh, cheers to some good Tassie Aussie sparkling. Mm. Small wonder from Tassie. Apparently yeah, a treasure winner. 2021, yeah. Probably one of the best things about doing these sort of trade things because a lot of it there's, there's the pros and cons but one of the pros is obviously having all Australian wines in just one spot like we literally just pulled up here this is the sort of masterclass area where at the end of the day now with no more masterclasses being run but I tell you what having a like a cheeky high sands uh Grenache, just yeah, yeah. half a bottle left here. So. Yeah, it's, and that's about like 300 bucks Aussie retail. So it might help ourselves uh, to this, but. Uh, and also some other bangers there as well. Of course, the Great Dakota, Green, 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 uh, good. Yeah, no, I think the excitement in the room for Australian wine here is really exciting. Um, mm. Excitement mm. being exciting, obviously. Um, but the fact that, you know, of course the, the big elephant, you know, this big white elephant in the room that everyone's talking about is that um, Australian wine is going back into China. So, of course, there's a great air of excitement around that, which is really, really cool. Given a bit of extra buzz for everything, it's been like the wine Australia section of the stands have been so well packed out this entire time. And in the context of these global wine fairs, that never happens. Yeah, Australia's like an umpteenth, really, of like the wine production of, say, France, Italy. I kind of came into this a little bit pessimistic because the tariffs have dropped, but like how for Australian wine into China have dropped, how good could it possibly be? Well, it seems like everyone sort of picked up what they put down. Yeah, like, exactly right. There's a whole bunch of new burgeoning Chinese businesses that all want to bring Australian wine. A massive missing opportunity for like Germany, Alsace, Austria, like they're pretty much non-present here, probably because they make white wine and the the idea is that the um, you know in China they don't really drink a lot of white wine, but that's actually so incorrect. But it's absolutely changing. Like we had a lot of Chinese people coming asking the white wine. Yeah, They're looking exactly. for lighter. You know, yeah. body things. It's like a hard swing that the lack of Riesling swing. and the lack of lack of uh, kind of like representation from Austria and Germany in particular is really interesting here because you know when we think about Southeast Asia, Hong Kong, Singapore, China, yes. Malaysia, Indonesia, um, Taiwan, all that kind of stuff, we think aromatic whites because it works so well with the food. Residual yeah. sugar, high acid, yeah. intense aromatics that work really well with the like work with this food. It's really interesting that it's super under present here. Honestly, justifiably so because up until very recently, you know, like the market has been very, very overwhelming for those styles. Yeah. And Australia made a name for itself in that particular region for those styles. So from here, we're gonna part ways. Opposite to Pro Wine though. Yeah. Yeah, you were heading back home, I was heading to the States. You were heading to the States, I'm heading back home. Yeah, so I'll be joining Laura. You'll get to see vlogs of Laura and I through the States, which I'm sure she's going to love. Anyway, guys, cheers. Cheers, cheers Noah. Cheers to you. Uh, we will see you on the flip side at the next one of these. <laughs>
<laughs> Bye, friend. I'll, I'll see, see you. Soon. Safe flight. You too, man. Ciao, see ciao. You. Bye. Bye, YouTube. <laughs> so, little bit or complete opposite of what actually happened last time that we were in, uh, say, Germany, where Noah went off to uh, the States and I took the long journey back home. Uh, it's been completely flipped on its head this time. So I'm actually heading uh, out to USA and Noah's heading back home this time. I'm on a bit of a uh, sort of five, six week journey, but I'll be meeting up with Laura there. So for the first time in a, in a while, Laura's gonna be jumping on the on the channel. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of work together and I've obviously haven't you know seen her in you know, a week or two. So it'd be really good to catch up. But uh, yeah, follow me to the airport. I'm not generally a fan of like massive companies taking over like like really really small companies or companies that are like built great growth potential but if that means that uh, blue bottle coffee ends up in Hong Kong airport I'm all right with it to be honest all right just about to board from Hong Kong to San Francisco you got a quick three hour, hour little stop over there and then jumping straight up to Portland and I think Laura is traveling about 24 hours behind me, so time for 12 hours and a little aluminium tube. Got to Portland safely. I was so incredibly jet lagged. Um, I just basically crashed for 12 hours. Got up early this morning though, went for a run. Uh, now I need to go and grab some coffee and meet Laura. Laura's arriving. Coffee, emails, work, get back into society and go. Awesome, managed to grab a whole bunch of coffee, tons of emails, and in other news, Laura actually managed to make her flight because in my supreme wisdom in booking it, I managed to only really give her like an hour and a half to get through customs in America, of course, uh, and then run to the, uh, to the gate. But she got there, she got there. So she's on her way here. She'll be here in like an hour or two. I'll be honest, I'm pretty giddy with excitement to see Laura. I'm pretty sure that she's probably not gonna be matching my level of energy, especially after traveling for like 24 hours and only really getting like four or five hours sleep, but I don't know. We'll see what happens if I shove the camera in her face. Maybe she might fake it till she makes it. Good flight? Yes. You don't look that tired. Do you want some more? Because there's a really good coffee place nearby. Yes, okay, all right. So it turns out this uh, crew and domain in Portland. Pretty good? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, seriously good. Uh, we kind of rolled in there and about maybe two, two, three hours later, <laughs> rolled out. Managed to get a, a bottle of Mount Eden Chardonnay, which I'm very much looking forward to trying, uh, as well as, well, I mean, first we actually need to, it's like a multi-stage side quest here because now we need to try to find a corkscrew because our hotel doesn't have one. And we also need glassware because our hotel doesn't have that either. So. I, yeah, we should have asked him to open it, but yeah. I didn't do room service. <sighs> okay, day over. I'm full. Laura's tired. <laughs> I think she's sick and tired of the camera. Camera's gone to bed. I'm going to bed. Bye.